Good morning, ladies, and thank you for joining us in Far Above Rubies as we kick off 2019. We are going to dive into a wonderful study of the Book of Romans. Before we do, I would like to preface this book with a little context, okay? The Book of Romans was not written to unbelievers. The Book of Romans was written to the church at Rome, those who had already received the Holy Spirit, those who had already been baptized in the name of Jesus, as we see over and over again in the New Testament the new church in the book of Acts, okay? We see the new church be birthed in Acts 2, Acts 8, Acts 10, Acts 19, and so on and so forth, okay? We see that take place, and these people are who Paul is writing to in the book of Romans. They're, they're a sect of the church, okay? He's not writing to unbelievers. He is writing to those who already believe. So we're going to see a lot of meaty uh, substance for us to take from. We're going to see a lot of challenging of our faith, a lot of challenging us to grow, to mature, to go deeper in God, okay? This is not the milk of the word. This is the meat of the word. So I want you to kind of buckle your seatbelts. I want you to pray. I want you to ask God to open your eyes and open your heart to the word we are going to receive in the month of January. I want you to understand that these are people he's writing to that understand that hero is real. The Lord our God is one Lord, that in the beginning was the word, the word became flesh and the word dwelled among us. The word was with God. I skipped over that part. The word was with God. The word was God and the word became flesh and dwelled among us. They understand that without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness that God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, received, uh, believed on in the world and received up into glory. Okay. So when Paul makes reference to Jesus Christ and God throughout this passage in Romans, he is referring to the offices of God, the ways in which God manifests himself. We see even in Romans 3, which we'll touch in a few days, that Paul himself says there is only one God. He's, he's very clear on the fact that there is one God. He makes reference to the offices of God, the ways in which the Lord manifests himself throughout time, okay? So I want you to understand those things. I want you to dive into those things. I want you to go into the book of Romans with us, eyes wide open. I promise I won't be very long as we go into our devotional portion now because I've taken a couple of minutes to kick us off for the book of Romans, all right? Diving into today's devotional is Romans chapter 1 verses 1 through 17. That's your reading challenge for today. Additional scripture is Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. We're going to talk about when we get together. When we get together. Romans chapter 1 verse 12 says this, when we get together, I want to encourage you in your faith, but I also want to be encouraged by yours. Paul is starting off his letter to the church at Rome and he's saying, when we get together, something beautiful happens. When we get together, there's this give and take of encouragement to our souls, to our faith that takes place. Now, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 says, let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another. There are many benefits to gathering together as a body of Christ, not the least of which, and maybe one of the most important, is encouraging the body, encouraging a brother or sister in the Lord and letting them encourage you, okay? So what I want to start January 1st off with is this. I want to encourage you to connect with the body of Christ. Find a place of worship. If you do not have one, please reach out and I will be so happy to help you find a church in your local area that I can say, I trust these folks are going to love you, are going to teach the word, and are going to help you to grow, all right? If you do have a church family and you don't leave there feeling encouraged, you might need to find another place. I, don't, I do not encourage church hopping. I do not encourage um, the first time you get upset, irritated, uh, disillusioned with something that happens in your church that you should go, ah, I quit and go find another church. I, don't, I do not advocate that. 
I do advocate, however, if long term you do not leave your church feeling encouraged in the Lord, feeling encouraged in your faith, feeling encouraged and challenged to grow deeper in the Word of God, then you may not be in the healthiest place you could be in a church, okay? Go find a church that you can be loyal to, you can be faithful to, that you can serve in, you can connect with, you can plug in, you can become committed to, and do it now. Don't wait for next week. Don't wait for next month, next year. Now is a great time to renew your commitments in faith. Renew your commitments in the Lord. So find a church. Find a body of believers to connect with that teaches the Word of God. That doesn't add to, that doesn't take away from the Word, but teaches the Word of God, encourages you every time you come together, okay? If the enemy, if the devil can get you discouraged, he can get you to believe things that are not true. He can get you to believe that no one loves you. He can get you to believe that you are worthless. He can get you to believe the lies that he has been propagating since the beginning of time, the lies that he fed Eve. Does God really love you? Does God really want the best for you if he's holding this back from you at this time? He can get you to believe lies if he can get you discouraged. How does he get you discouraged? By getting you isolated, by disconnecting you from the body of Christ. When he disconnects you from the body, he can begin to discourage your heart, discourage your mind, discourage your spirit, and before long, spiritual degradation takes place, okay? So I want you to take this away from today. Isolation breeds spiritual degradation, okay? Isolation breeds spiritual degradation. When you are isolated from the body, your spiritual health begins to uh, take a hit. Your spiritual health comes under attack. Your spiritual health um, becomes sick. It becomes sickly because you're not getting that, that weekly, daily encouragement from the body of Christ. We are a part of the body. And when any member is cut off from your body, it cannot live. If I chop off my arm, that arm is not going to thrive on its own because it's disconnected from the body. If you disconnect yourself from the body of Christ, you might survive for a little time. You might hang in there for a little time. You might try really hard to stay encouraged in yourself and in God's spirit. But eventually, if you stay isolated, if you stay disconnected from the body of Christ, you will spiritually die. We need one another and we are implored all throughout the New Testament to stay connected, to get together with believers, to encourage one another in the Lord, to strengthen one another, to uplift one another, to pray for one another, to intercede on behalf of one another. How can you do that if you are disconnected from the body. Get together. I'm going to be done here for today. I'm excited of kicking off this new year in Romans. I'm going to be done for today. Go read Romans chapter 1 verses 1 through 17, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25, and find a body of fellowship, a body of uh, believers to get together with this Sunday, this midweek, wherever they meet, Saturday, Sunday, it doesn't matter. Get together with the body of Christ Find a church you can connect, you can serve, you can plug in, you can be committed, you can be a part, belong in the body of Christ. If no one has told you lately, you are loved and you are cherished and you are valuable. You bring value to the body of Christ. If you are missing from the body, there's a gaping hole that is a part of the body. If I chop off that arm, I am not complete. A church is not complete unless you are plugged in, unless every member of that body is plugged in and doing its part, okay? You have beautiful, tremendous worth, my friend, and that worth is far above rubies. Thank you for being here with me today, and I will see you all again tomorrow. God bless you.